Did you know some of your Hollywood favorites were drug addicts who also died as a result of addiction? Probably, but did you know that a surprising number of them were total accidents? Today, let's explore the crazy list of the top 30 drug addicts in Hollywood history. Let's begin. First on our list is the 28-year-old Ledger who died in New York City in 2008 after a drug overdose that resulted from accidentally mixing prescription drugs oxycodone, vicodin, valium, Xanax and others. He posthumously won an Oscar a couple of months later for his role as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Ledger's struggles with alcohol and drugs may have led to his divorce from actress Michelle Williams, who urged Ledger to enter a rehab facility in 2006, according to US Weekly. Now, the actor's death is a cautionary tale about the potentially fatal effects of combining drugs. The legendary sex symbol and film star died of an overdose of barbiturates in 1962. Monroe, 36, had attempted suicide four times before. She had an erratic personal life filled with highs and lows. Monroe was married and divorced three times, including to baseball star Joe DiMaggio and playwright Arthur Miller. She abused drugs, including sleeping pills and alcohol. John Belushi's cocaine use is practically legendary in Hollywood. Reportedly, one of his favorite party games was Cocaine Chicken, in which a line of cocaine was poured and he and a friend would race to see who could snort the most before reaching the middle. Unfortunately, Belushi's cocaine abuse contributed to an early death at the age of 33. The funny man and member of the original Saturday Night Live cast died in 1982 after injecting a speedball, a combination of cocaine and heroin. Despite numerous attempts at recovery, the comedian was found dead in a bungalow at the celebrity favorite Los Angeles hotel Chateau Marmont. Belushi, who also starred in Animal House and recorded albums with his band, The Blues Brothers, was 33 years old. After her first performance at the New Grand Theatre in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, at the ripe young age of 30 months old, Garland went on to star in 35 films and countless live performances, even setting a New York vaudeville record. She died at age 47 in 1969 of an overdose of barbiturates. Throughout her life, she had a rocky relationship with fame, and the Wizard of Oz star, known for her lively performances, became hooked on stimulants and depressants when she was a young Hollywood starlet. They'd give us pep pills, then they'd take us to the studio hospital and knock us cold with sleeping pills. After four hours, they'd wake us up and give us the pep pills again, Garland told McCall's magazine. That's the way we worked, and that's the way we got thin. That's the way we got mixed up, and that's the way we lost contact. Judy's co-star Mickey Rooney, who she described as having gone through the same drug pumping that she went through, came out to dispute those claims and denied MGM ever giving him and Judy any drugs. However, the truth remains unknown as both Mickey and Judy are dead. Mickey died of a heart attack on a Sunday, but before that, his stepson came out publicly and described him as a violent husband with a raging addiction to sleeping pills. His stepson, Chris Aber, claimed that Mickey's reliance on drugs was worrying as well as his violent mood swings, which led to a life of abuse inflicted on his eighth wife throughout their marriage. He reportedly tormented his wife all the time, bending her fingers back, screaming in her ears and pinching her. His struggle with addiction didn't help a bit. Chris, who collected Mickey's medication weekly, claimed he needed a shopping bag to carry it all. Shocking, right? If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can bring more awesome content like this your way. Actor Robert Downey Jr.'s substance abuse problems are no secret in Hollywood. He was arrested in 1987 and multiple times in 1996 for drug possession. 
He attended rehab to help him overcome his cocaine addiction several times, but he did not seem to make real headway until about 2002. Since then, he has starred in several blockbuster movies and appears to have got his career back on track, transforming into the actor we all know and love today. Making her debut at the age of seven, with her role as the wide-eyed little girl from E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Drew had a tumultuous childhood marked by tragic events. Being born into a dynasty meant that by the age of 11, she was put to work in dog food commercials, and by seven, she was a movie star. By the time Drew was 11, she had developed a drinking problem, and by the year after, it had escalated into a drug problem. When Drew was 13, she cut her wrists and her mother got her hospitalized. She struggled with substance abuse at an extremely early age and was reportedly snorting cocaine by the age of 13. Fortunately, she went to rehab as a teenager and has been clean since then. Barrymore is one of few child stars to transition to a successful career as an adult. The Doors frontman, who rocked the musical world in the 1960s with his leather pants and sexy swagger, became yet another member of the infamous 27 Club when he died in 1971. Although no autopsy was performed, Morrison is thought to have died of a heroin overdose. The rocker, who graduated from the film school at the University of California at Los Angeles, was also a celebrated poet who self-published two poetry collections and would often break into spontaneous verse during his concerts. Some had opinions as to where he found his inspiration for his lovely poetry. David, the producer of one of Hollywood's most acclaimed movies, Gone with the Wind, which was theorized as one of the highest record-breaking films, winning 10 Oscars and a position as the highest box office take of any film ever. However, behind the scenes, his actors and actresses complained of his drug-induced terrorism, bullying and obsession with actresses showing more cleavage. David was said to have pushed his film to fame and glory in a drug-fueled haze. He reportedly depended on drugs, like Benzedrine, to get him through long hours of filming. He was even spotted crushing up the drug and licking the pieces from his palm. Although reports of fanatics who claim to have spotted the King are a common occurrence, Presley died in 1977 at his Graceland home in Tennessee at the age of 42. His girlfriend found him lying face down in the master suite bathroom of his Memphis mansion in Graceland. When the toxicology report came back several weeks later, however, toxicologists noted at least eight different barbiturates and narcotics in his body at the time. Elvis's blood was found to contain very high levels of the opiates Delorded, Percodan, Demerol and Codeine, as well as Quaaludes. Presley, who burst onto the music scene in the 1950s with his twangy voice and thrusting hips, had been a long-time abuser of prescription drugs. Tim Allen, Comedian Tim Allen is a Hollywood success story after early struggles with drug abuse that included incarceration for possession of cocaine, Allen cleaned up his act. He wrote about his struggles in his memoir, Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man. Allen said once in an interview with Closer magazine, it put me in a position of great humility and I was able to make amends to friends and family and refocus my life on setting and achieving goals. Joanna, first wife of Ryan O'Neill, starred in over 17 feature films and guest starred in over 100 television series episodes before her alcohol and drug addiction took a toll on her career. It was an era when drug and alcohol addictions were seen as moral failures rather than real mental and physical. She tried to get help from psychiatric hospitals in 1970, but not up to a year later, she was arrested for drunk driving after getting into a fight. This arrest led to her losing custody of her children. She ended up being supported by her daughter Tatum, who became a child star at the age of 10 and was one of the highest paid child actresses of her era. After her marriage to Ryan, his career seemed to blow up while Joanna's career slowed down, which led to her depressive state. 
Her alcohol and drug use escalated after her divorce and personal life was ravaged by substance abuse. She moved her family down to a rundown ranch where she had the awful idea of providing care to troubled youths. Her daughter, Tatum, describes the environment in her autobiography as one that was filled with drug abuse, unsanitary conditions, beatings at the hands of her mother's 16-year-old boyfriend, and being locked in the garage for such long periods that she and her brother resorted to eating dog food. Her smoking habits eventually caught up to her, and she ended up dying of lung cancer in 1997. After shooting to fame in the 1986 classic film Stand By Me, Phoenix died in 1993 at just 23 years of age outside of the Viper Room Club on Los Angeles' Sunset Strip. Rumors first began of drug use when Phoenix filmed My Own Private Idaho in which he played a gay hustler to critical acclaim. His death from an overdose of cocaine and morphine firmly secured his place in pop culture as a talented actor who died too early. The American actor never overcame his addiction, and eventually it killed him. He featured in two seasons of the reality TV show Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. Around the mid-1980s, Conaway realized he had a substance abuse problem. He underwent treatment in the late 1980s, but in early 2008 appeared with other celebrities in the VH1 reality series Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. It was revealed on the show that Conaway was addicted to cocaine, alcohol and painkillers, and that he was in a codependent relationship with his girlfriend, who was also a user of prescription opiates. The 60-year-old had suffered a back injury on the set of Grease while filming the Grease lightning scene, which had been exacerbated by lifting boxes in his home, and he had turned to substances to manage the pain. In August 2009, Conaway was interviewed by Entertainment Tonight. In the interview, the actor claimed he was much better after a fifth back operation and that he had yet to use painkillers again. However, on May 11, 2011, Conaway was found unconscious from what was initially described as an overdose of substances believed to be pain medication. Conway battled with addiction until he died in 2011. Known as the Princess of Pop for how she single-handedly revived teen pop during the late 1900s and early 2000s. However, she also struggled with a drug addiction. Britney Spears became one of the most influential pop stars in recent memory, with multiple hit singles. Shortly after divorcing Kevin Federline in 2006, revelations began surfacing about her drug addiction and mental health issues. After entering a rehab facility, she reportedly attempted suicide and was claiming to be the Antichrist. Luckily, Spears was able to get her life together after receiving a proper bipolar diagnosis and successfully completing rehab. The American actor and the second oldest Baldwin brother, despite his fame and acclaim, Daniel made it to the list of drug addicts in Hollywood. In 1998, Baldwin was found running naked through the halls of New York's Plaza Hotel, shouting his own last name and was arrested for possession of cocaine. He pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct and was sentenced to three months in drug rehab. He later revealed that he had been battling cocaine addiction since 1989. He claims that he started using cocaine at the age of 29 after landing his first acting job that year. After that, he became a die-hard cocaine addict. He didn't drink much, didn't take pills, didn't smoke, but cocaine grabbed him so much that he had to go into rehabilitation nine times before being able to overcome this addiction. Now, he's a rehabilitation coach and renowned actor that fans know and love. Corey Haim was a child star in the 80s, known for films like Lost Boys and Busted. He died at the age of 38 in 2010 from a cocaine overdose. In 1994, Haim told The Sun, But a year before that, I was starting to drink beer on the set of Lucas. 
I lived in Los Angeles in the 80s, which was not the best place to be. I did cocaine for about a year and a half, then it led to crack. I started on the downers, which were a hell of a lot better than the uppers because I was a nervous wreck. But one led to two, two led to four, four led to eight, until at the end, it was about 85 a day. The doctors could not believe I was taking that much. And that was just the Valium. I'm not talking about the other pills I went through. Eventually, drugs were ruled out as a cause of death for Corey. Whitney Houston, a seven-time Grammy winning, 26-time Grammy-nominated R&B soul singer who also met an untimely early death that was caused by drug use. At the age of 48, Houston was found dead in a hotel bathtub. The medical examiner found that heart disease and cocaine caused her death. During an interview with Diane Sawyer in 2002, Houston opened up about her career in substance abuse, saying that it wasn't the drugs that were the problem, but herself. American actor and musician River Phoenix, who was pronounced dead on the morning of October 31st, 1993, at the age of 23, was proven to have died of a drug overdose. Statements of his ex-girlfriend Martha Plimpton claimed that it was River's drug use that affected their relationship, although they both remained close friends until he died in October. Sources say that after River spent three weeks in Utah filming for a movie, he landed in Los Angeles to spend a few days on a drug binge with his band member. Cocaine and heroin were consumed without sleep in days. On the day before his death, Robert Forrest claims he remembers River tapping him on the shoulder during the performance at the Viper Room and telling him he didn't feel so well and thought he had overdosed. However, Forrest brushed it off as an over-exaggeration. Moments later, Forrest said that a commotion erupted in the club and he went outside to find Matisse, his girlfriend, screaming as her boyfriend was lying on the sidewalk, having convulsions. When the ambulance arrived, Phoenix was still alive and his band member accompanied him to the medical center. However, attempts to resuscitate River at the hospital were unsuccessful. The heavyset comedian who bounced in and out of rehab and frequently binged on food, alcohol and drugs finally succumbed to his addiction when he overdosed on cocaine and morphine in Chicago in 1997. According to his brother Tom Farley's book, The Chris Farley Show, Chevy Chase, gave Farley a stern warning before a Saturday Night Live reunion show saying, Look, you're not John Belushi, and when you overdose or kill yourself, you will not have the same acclaim that John did. You'll be a blip in the New York Times obituaries page, and that'll be it. Is that what you want? American actor and ex-boxer Ryan O'Neill, who starred in the 1970 motion picture Love Story, is also known for being a drug user. Ryan's temper and battles with addiction kept him in the public eye for so long and apparently destroyed his entire family. Allegedly, he even gave his son Griffin cocaine at the age of 11 and strongly encouraged him to take it. Years later, Griffin claims this is what destroyed his life. He described his father, Ryan, as abusive, narcissistic and psychopathic. His daughter walked in on him, having sex with her best friend, and he allegedly punched his son's pregnant wife in the face. Not just that, but when his son was 16, Ryan punched out his teeth. It's no wonder Ryan's family has been described as the most dysfunctional family in Hollywood. All his wives and all but one of his four children have struggled with drug abuse and addiction. And Ryan seems to be the common denominator in all of that. Some time ago, Ryan and his son Redmond were arrested for possession of controlled substances and were each released on $10,000 bail. While the father walked free, Redmond ended up in jail, not for the first time. Ryan later died on the 8th of December 2023. The Home Alone star described his father as a cruel, violent man. His parents never married and split when he was in his teens and his mother filed for custody. 
Rising to fame at the tender age of 10, Culkin was so paranoid that his parents wanted to steal his money, so he took his parents to court to block them from controlling his trust fund, which at the time was worth around $20 million. And afterward, the media reported that he divorced his parents. From legal meltdowns and an arrest to drug abuse, Culkin's fall from grace was a hard thing for fans to bear. In 2004, a 24-year-old Macaulay's mugshot made headlines when he was charged with possession of 17.3 grams of marijuana and two controlled substances without a prescription in Oklahoma. He was briefly jailed and released on $4,000 bail. However, rumors continued to spiral about his drug habit as snaps of Macaulay looking gaunt and frail and clutching an energy drink shocked fans in 2012. Macaulay soon got clean of his act and fell in love with his fellow child star Brenda Song. The famed electric guitarist died after overdosing on sleeping pills in 1970. Just 27 years old, Hendrix was at the height of his musical career, having headlined the 1969 Woodstock Music Festival. He was also a heavy drug user, especially of the psychedelic drug LSD. Musician Eric Clapton, a close friend of Hendrix's, remembered the legend in his memoir, Clapton, the autobiography. He had this enormous gift and a fantastic technique, like that of someone who spent all day playing and practicing, yet he didn't seem that aware of it. I also got to see the playboy in him. He loved to spend all night hanging out, getting drunk or stoned, and when he did pick up the guitar, it was very throwaway to him, as if he didn't take himself too seriously. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Capote Oscar nominee, used alcohol and drugs a lot as a young adult. Hoffman relapsed in February 2014 and died from a combined drug intoxication. The Peace of My Heart singer died after she overdosed on heroin at age 27 in a Los Angeles motel room, just 16 days after her friend Jimi Hendrix also overdosed. Known for uninhibited performances, often fueled by alcohol and drugs, the queen of rock and roll paved the way for female musicians in an otherwise male-dominated industry. Stevie Nicks commented on Joplin's influence. I only saw Janis Joplin one time on a hot summer day in San Jose, California, at the Santa Clara Fairgrounds. She was extraordinary. She had a connection with the audience that I had not seen before. And when she left the stage, I knew that a little bit of my destiny had changed. In a blink of an eye, she changed my life. The Olsen twins made their debut at nine months old, when both sisters were jointly cast for the role of Michelle Tanner in the family comedy Full House. However, one of the two sisters, Mary Kate, seemed to be the one who struggled with her self-image, and this led her to drink, smoke, and do all sorts of things. At a point, it got so bad that she developed anorexic habits that eventually led to the full-blown disorder and a related cocaine addiction that led her to rehab. Her bodyguard, who was interviewed, claimed to have seen her smoking, drinking, and doing drugs. However, it did not really become a public spectacle until Mary Kate's boyfriend, Heath Ledger, was allegedly found lying dead in his bed with overdosing as cause of death. When Ledger's body was found, Mary Kate was the first person called and she immediately requested immunity in the case of who supplied Ledger the drugs. The tale was carried everywhere, with some even inferring that perhaps Mary Kate was involved in Ledger's death than she cares to admit. Thankfully, she was treated of her addiction and is now living in sobriety. Anna Nicole Smith, 1967 to 2007, was an American model, actress, and television personality. Rising to fame in the 1990s, she became known for her glamorous lifestyle and highly publicized personal life. Anna Nicole Smith was found dead in 2007 with a lethal dose of a drug concoction in her system. She was noted to have many seizures as a result of her drug use. 
Sweetin's journey took a challenging turn as she started consuming alcohol at the age of 14, shortly after the conclusion of Full House. For 13 years, she battled substance abuse, including ecstasy, methamphetamine and crack cocaine, attributing her choices to boredom. In 2009, Sweetin wrote a memoir, Unsweetened, detailing her descent into alcohol and drug abuse following the show's conclusion. She candidly shared moments, such as addressing a crowd at Wisconsin's Marquette University while emotionally affected by a two-day binge. Reflecting on her life in the public eye, she discussed her positive transformation since achieving sobriety in December 2008. She redirected her path, working as a clinical logistics coordinator at a Los Angeles drug rehab center and earning a degree as a drug and alcohol counselor. Rumor has it that the King of Pop used up to 19 fake IDs to fuel his drug addiction in the last 15 years of his life. Recognized as one of the greatest cultural icons in the 20th century, he earned multiple awards, beating every other male singer ever. Prior to leaving the Jackson 5 in 1984, Jackson and the other members of the group filmed a Pepsi commercial. During a simulated concert, pyrotechnics accidentally set Jackson's hair on fire, causing second-degree burns to his scalp. To help him with the pain from the severe burns and the reconstructive surgeries that followed, Jackson's doctors prescribed opioids. Later, Jackson would attribute the fire to the beginning of his experience with drug addiction. In 1993, Jackson entered rehab, where he progressed through a 12-step program. Despite his commitment to recovery, he continued to live with substance addiction for the rest of his life. Aside from his time in rehab, Jackson was largely in denial of his addiction. Friends and family routinely staged interventions and privately expressed their concerns regarding his drug habits. Unfortunately, Jackson turned down their help. Jackson died in 2009 at age 50 of cardiac arrest. His death was caused by a combination of sedatives and propofol, which his doctor prescribed and administered to treat insomnia. Afterward, his doctor was charged with involuntary manslaughter, but Jackson was already gone. Last on our list is the Broadway star Brittany Murphy recognized for her roles. From shows like Clueless and Freeway, she even voiced one of the characters in the much-loved movie Happy Feet. Tragically, Brittany died late 2009, in December at the age of 32, under disputed circumstances. Although her drug use was never confirmed, rumors flew around that she regularly ingested heroin and sniffed cocaine. When she collapsed in 2009, her death was attributed to a drug overdose. In the early 2000s, many commented that she had too many drugs than food after she suddenly lost a lot of weight. Her sudden marriage to Simon Monjak didn't help as sources report that he was a very disturbed individual. He also died not up to five months after Brittany died. Some even believe her cause of death was something other than overdose. Simon, who was known famously in Hollywood as Konjak, was drowning in debt. And both Brittany's brother and father, years after her death, still believe that the cause was murder. However, after having found a multitude of prescription and non-prescription drugs at Brittany's bedside, the coroner maintains that the cause of death was a drug overdose. Brittany's friends as well confirmed that she did in fact have a drug problem for which they had begged her to get help for months before she died. She was discovered to have become dependent on pain medication after a series of cosmetic surgeries she underwent earlier in her life. Her cause of death still remains disputed, but for now, Brittany died an addict. There we have it, folks, the crazy list of the top 30 drug addicts in Hollywood history. Did we miss anyone? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love the one showing on your screen right now. Click it, and we'll see you in the next one.